<laughs> uh, okay, and this is the covenant of Shalom. Uh, Let's see, well, okay, so the connection has been made. Book of the prophet Isaiah chapter 11 is the establishing, establishing of the kingdom, right? So right. Sukkot, yes, Sukkot, allotted to the authority of the Father. Right. Principle, you know, like, um, foremostly, but expressed, uh, no doubt, through the Son as well. Yeah, over there. So what I was trying to get to Joseph was um, the blessing. And how the lion is is a uh, symbolically represented in in the covenant. That is the flag. Which which blessing? Of Rastafari. Well, it's it's Yaakov's, right? But then the 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 blessing that's allotted to to oh. Yosef. Oh. So it'd be chapter forty nine of the book of Genesis. Okay. So it begins, um, let's see, Judah, and this is, uh, we got to keep in mind that I'm trying to, I'm trying to incorporate, I'm trying to incorporate into this context, Judaism, mm. and, and, uh, an expression of, in its time, mm. the living word, but then when, when the seeds, when the time of the seasons to change, right. then it must either remain living in the spirit, mm. the prophecy of time, or become a dead letter, mm. like indoctrinated, limited. True. So, uh, after saying that, we could go forth and says, um, chapter forty-nine, verse eight, Judah, Yehuda, mm. thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hands shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's mm. children shall bow down before thee. Mm. And I just got to add, like, um, we, you know, we always have to, like, keep in mind that even though it's an eternal reflection of the father and the son and the son and the father being one, mm. some of these things are allotted in specifically in the authority of one or the other. Right. So, saying that, Goes on to say, Judah, Yehuda is the, a lion's whelp. So now we get the, the lion, symbolism. From the prey. My son, thou art gone up. He mm. stooped down. He couched down. Oh no, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion who shall rouse him up, rouse him up. Excuse me, a little bit of cotton mouth there. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. But um, so I mean. I don't want to go into that because I'm not prepared, probably. But it's, it seems like there's a a reflection of the young lion in Jesus Christos. Could that be possible? Yeah. And the old lion who shall because he's already yeah he look he's, he's already enthroned. Mm, who can rise him there's up? There's a whole very good study on this that I don't I, I don't even know about yeah I did publish it too. Uh, he's in cushion. He's in a scion in his resting or established locale. Who's gonna rise him up? Right. Let me, you know, he's got his hand over his enemies. His yad. That name called upon in in triumph. Mm. Ever connected in in praise. Praise ye Yah. Praise ye Yah. And then the elilta, the halel, mm. the el 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 el. Yeah. So that's very interesting, but I, okay, I'm gonna go forward because I'm, I'm just trying to stick to the to the the flag. Let's see. The the scepter, scepter. The scepter. The scepter. That's what it is, mother. Yeah. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. The government mm -hmm. shall not depart from Yehuda. From the praises of Jah. Rastafari. <laughs> so it's um. It goes forth saying, the, skept the, the scepter shall not depart from Yehuda nor a lawgiver 
from between his feet until Shiloh come. And to him shall the gathering of the people be. Sukkot, right? Mm, right. The ingathering. The ingathering. Allotted in, in the authority of the Father, although ever present in the Son. I mean. Yo, this is so much right here that we. I mean. And so going, going forth. Uh, let's see. I don't know. Even though this is prophecy, I mean, it's possible that, that, that the hoof was split. And the and the cud was, or or yeah, the cud was was chewed, man. Cause it it, it Jesus Christos um f fulfills like a lamb covenant kind of, even though it's expressed in a lion in a young lion form kind of. Yeah, the study. Let me let me let me see. Well, yeah, but let me let me just go forward. That that's kind of like, yeah, that, that's going off the point. That's going off the point. You're right. So going forward, I mean, uh, the scepter, the ring, binding his foal to the vine, and his ass is colt to the choice vine. Mm. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. It's right there between, but the verses, um, okay, that already connected because this is Sukkot because of the ingathering and the scepter, which is the government, so that would connect to the flag. The flag. Right. Good, okay, thanks for that. No doubt. Um, Jeremiah, and then I think Jeremiah goes into the banners too. Mm. I'm not sure. It, it most likely probably would. Although at the as of, at the present moment I can't really like recall any direct um mentions to it. Mm -hmm. And so so the flag, the government, the kingdom, the suit coat, the in gathering to whom all nations, the pendant, the ensign, the standard, to whom all nations, all peoples shall seek to. Actually, I'll go forward to Isaiah chapter 11 once again to properly, properly state that. And the Psalms goes into a lot of the, the pendants also. So how the kingdom will be set up. And in the last, in that day, excuse me, in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, <clears throat> which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious, like a crouching lion who shall arouse him, like a couching lion. Then going forward on to, and he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcast of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah. So if the covenant is is um in symbol symbolically represented in the lion, mm -hmm. then we add to it. We could go. We could go to numbers and see how Judah and the lion, to whom the authority has been handed over, maintains the covenant represented in the in the in the Rastafari flag, the Ethiopian flag, mm -hmm. which we share inheritance to. So the Book of Numbers. If I'm not mistaken, it would be chapter 1 or 2. Do not take up. Hey, number chapter 1 or 2. Around there. Okay. Hold up, hold up. Yeah, so, yeah, chapter 2, watch. Uh, the order of the host, arrangement of the camp. 
And the Lord spake to Moses and to Aaron, saying, Every man of the children of Israel ch shall pitch by his own standard, with the ensign of their father's house. Mm -hmm. Far off about the tabernacle of the congregation shall they pitch. In verse 3 it reads, And on the east side, on the rising of the sun, on the Kedem, even Kedem, yeah, <laughs> the side towards the rising of the sun, <laughs> even that that sun of righteousness mm. that that shines Jesus Christos, I would say. And uh, there's um, there's evidence to support that it's in the book of Malachi, mm. how it's uh, the sun of righteousness is right, more, right. it's more leaning towards the authority of of the Father, I would say. Mm. There's supporting evidence there. We could go, we could check that out later. Okay. So it goes on, continues saying that, um, and on the east side towards the rising of the sun, mm -hmm. shall they of the standard of the camp of Judah pitch throughout their armies. And so to Judah has been given like the government really, and in this sense, I mean, it's prophetic. Mm -hmm. It's not so much, but it's in faith. Right. And so Judah keeping the keeping the you know the blessing and its resemblance of a lion. So to the east at the rising, whenever Israel would march forward, they'd be headed by that same standard. Right. The covenant of, of Noah represented in the ark, the bow, that's that sign of that of that covenant. Mm -hmm. Which is a faith, light, with the diffusion of the word, and stuff like that. So Numbers chapter, let's see, I think it was chapter 10. And it came to pass on the 20th day of the second month, in the second year, that the cloud so we have a cloud, and it's funny because it's um by fire by night mm. and shadow by day, right. right? And that cloud, in which was probably the light, that same covenant, you know, right. represented in the seven sevenfold um frequencies that make up the visible light. Mm. So I mean that's interesting, but nonetheless, so on the twentieth day of the second month, in the second year. That, uh, that the cloud was taken up from off the tabernacle of the testimony and the children of Israel took their journeys out of the wilderness of Sinai and that cloud rest, rested in the wilderness of Paran hmm that wasn't necessarily what I wanted to read When am I saying? Do you remember, like, um, huh? uh, do you recall, like, where it is, um, in the book of Numbers that that Judah stands up and marches forward? It's like pretty, pretty near to this. Even when the camp sets out. Oh yeah, so I should have just kept on reading. Excuse me. Uh. And they first took their journey according to the commandment of the Lord by the hand of Moses. In the first place, went the standard of the camp of the children of Judah mm. according to their armies so spearheading like the march mm. is that standard right and so I mean it, I think it'd be pretty acceptable that the transfer of government is already in the hands of Judah really yeah it definitely is like leading leading the armies mm -hmm. Of the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness mm -hmm. march and no doubt the symbology I mean even if if actually manifested on the flag in that in that space-time continuum you know in that moment in the spirit of prophecy mm -hmm. whether the line was on the flag or not the word symbolically upholds the line right. in that standard mm -hmm. that holds the covenant at the at the first rising carried by the tribe of Judah Yehuda and 
Yeah, so... That lion in the, in the living spirit would have to be represented in the authority of the Father mm. in His allotted time. And then I guess it would, it would be like wise to just kind of point out that this is where kind of like the, some of the some of the other doctrines get it right and wrong and confusing that Jesus Christos came in to represent that conquering line, right? Yeah, definitely. So he was a he was the lamb. The lamb, right? Right. So even though he was of the of the tribe of Yehuda, right, that was in the. No, he's was, allotted authority, right? No, I, no, he just said. I, don't mean, I, I mean, that's what the studies would would would, would point to because he would fulfill Passover. You know, like Suko is not fulfilled until until it's like it's a shallow. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I mean, going forward, just to, like, uh, settle the matter with the flag, I mean, mm. this last section of the standard, it, it would be the fulfillment in, in, in Judah and Edamawi Khal Selassie in prevailing to carry the standard, really. I mean, it doesn't matter what people want to believe, however it happened, mm. symbolically or materialistically. I mean, because, I mean, people throw out some weird ideas out there whatever people want to think mm -hmm. this standard has been only up, upheld by certain people and it's represented in the independence of that certain people mm -hmm. raising a single standard for such a long time mm -hmm. the same flag or standard which they were willing to die for right, right. and that and it just so happens that it describes an eternal act of a conquering line forever prevailing in that our faith is 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 that prevaileth the conquering the overcoming mm -hmm. expressed in faith in the Tawahedo mixing mixing of the of the word with the living faith applying it so we see the the, the Noah day or the nowadays sign like his majesty sitting upon the throne as the conquering line of the tribe of Judah right. so and the symbol the I think what I should try to get to like um, the, not try to make it long whatever is um the symbology of of the only people that are likened to israel ethiopia because they upheld the living spirit that is expressed since the very first covenant in noah the faith mm. see what what that flag represents man is so is so so significant in that it expresses the authority in yehuda in the praises of jab praises to Yahweh right. as a form of worship mm. and it received the change in the times and the spirit of the moment in prophecy mm. and adapted to the to the living word the word was made manifest and no doubt Ethiopia stretched forth her arms to God you know and so they received Christianity so Judaism proper real Judaism fulfilling its duty and to recognize the sign of the times and shift into the new the new day mm. receiving Christ as the living word and making that that leap of faith from Judaism mm. and receiving the living word in the spirit of the prophecy in time and becoming Christian mm. so we have the line of Judah the old government the Old Testament ones would say being transferred to the cross right is carrying it? his cross right Receiving Christ, Judaism, Judeo-Christianity, in the in the Tawahedo sense. Right. So that's all represented in this flag. Uh -huh. The conquering line of Judah hath prevailed, and the prevailing is everlasting. You know, so uh, it's in uh, our confidence of the victory of good over evil. I mean. And then it's perfectly expressed in. In the word, because that's, the root of David, mm -hmm. the conquering line of tribe of Judah. Conquer line of the tribe of Judah hath prevailed. Uh -huh. To open the book and loose the seven seals, look there and I mean it may not have quoted correctly, but 
we get the picture. Mm. So all expressed, and, and that's the thousands of years of independence. That's what we fight for. That's that covenant that is that is in the Constitution. The whole, like, from the beginning of the book to the end, it's the same Constitution. Mm. The Bible in our Constitution, and it's 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 a fulfillment of the whole book, even in the standard that it explains the story. In the beginning was the Word, you know, and the Word was the light. Oh, it was right. the same covenant, you know. I mean, it's just re repetition of 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 how how unique and, and creative our creator is that he could do the same thing and express it in an eternal sense right and it's ever ever constant ever ever whole mm. right, it's very interesting because jeremiah is like speaking about the regathering also and speaking i mean it's 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 like the judgment and i'm trying to see the banner, the banner, banner. In this sense, it's banner. So, I mean, the banner, our, our standard mm -hmm. really is sustained in in the crown government, in the crown, under the crown's government. Mm -hmm. They're standing in, in the crown as as inheritance, as that unborn child. Or, or that child coming to maturity. Right, it's in the Constitution. Yes, it's in the Constitution. And as we have seen, it's expressed clearly like in, in the Bible since the very beginning. Yeah, it's, the, same essence. it's the covenant of the covenant. And it upholds our standard mm. from the very beginning, from the creation of light. Right. Sevenfold perfect um, spirit, mm. which is all inclusive of our flag. The transfer of, of covenants from Old Testament to living to New Testament mm. and to Rastafari receiving it as Ethiopians received it from Judaism to Christianity now from Christianity us to the <laughs> yeah the, the, to the fullness the Constitution is like all the covenants together it seems like uh, yeah all the the laws that govern man mm. the reign of God his government his reign it's all constitutional. And it's oh. all represented in, in the flag. Okay. Um, so, I think it, um, what was it? In connection to the throne, mm. one who sat upon the throne through whom we are even able to act in the knowledge of our flag representing Rastafari and the faithful Ethiopians through him that sat upon that sits upon that throne which is in relation to the to the covenant since the very beginning mm. the throne in heaven throne on earth the divinity in Jesus Christos and the majesty in Abba Father <coughs> the throne on earth which is revealed in the highlands of Ethiopia oh. carefully protected <laughs> from the from the evil curiosities of the of the world preserved to be a living testimony but it don't end there we keep it going Like Sister Emmanuel says, we keep it moving, and the spirit is ever present, ever growing, ever moving, ever mm -hmm. perfecting. So we go with it. So no doubt the whole study of the flag, I mean, just reflects the Constitution. Yeah, because look, here goes the, ba the, the banner. Okay, it says, this is Jeremiah chapter 50, and speak of the covenant also. Declare ye among the nations, and publish, and set up a standard. The standard, same as the banner, um, publish and conceal not. 
Babylon is taken, Bel is confounded, Merodach is broken in pieces, her idols are confounded, her images are broken in pieces, for out of the north there cometh up a nation against her, which shall make her land desolate, and none shall dwell therein, they shall remove, remove ya, <laughs> they shall depart both man and beast, in those days and in that time, saith Yahweh, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah together, going and weeping. <laughs> they shall go and seek Yahweh their Elohim. They shall ask the way to Zion with their faces thitherward, saying, Come and let us join ourselves to Yahweh in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. Oh, this is like a prophecy of now, though, like the things that are going on now with all the lost sheep, and mm. both Ethiopians being the children of Judah, and the children of Israel, like the the you know the ones that don't recognize His Majesty, and the Ethiopians that don't recognize. Well, the majesty. thing is that the, that you know, like the like the Christian boy, the Christian boy, <laughs> yeah. how he how he dom, he's calling upon the the strong long-haired men you know right. it's like to to prepare the way uh -huh. to set up a standard uh -huh. to be an insign to the people right because that otherwise to sign to the people it says, the way this is published look this is the order right here the nazarene baptizes the Na the ras teferi baptizes the christ even though it, it's it's a it's a fact it's a truth and reality in and of itself but then symbolically it's like we are to be baptized of him but you know ritualistically it was samuel that that um baptized or or sprinkled the the, the spirit upon king david right mm. samuel being a nazarite a rastafari type and so we see the same the transfer of of and even that's a covenant and a transfer of power but not to get, go into that we just to point out the reflection of john the oh, baptist being right. a rastaman type mm. a nazarite and then baptizing christos Jesus. Mm. and so us now we're that covenant people that bring in that raise that standard mm. that prepare the ways for others to you know if it be job will that they find themselves in light of his majesty to christ yeah, yes, okay. yeah my see the standard yeah this is the this is the standard for people to exodus because <laughs> and that standard is to lead the people right right so because, who leads the this people is, this is the north cut huh yehuda leads the people right but yeah the standard is in the wilderness I'm yeah saying. Is, is yehuda because i mean this is just speaking of the banner of his majesty specifically because um this is the this is the North Country prophecy. This is right now. This is like a right now, right now. Right Could this now. be? Uh, they seek a way to Zion. Zion is the kingdom of David, right? So, or the Davidic monarchy, mm -hmm. and they can't even recognize the Davidic monarchy. And even today, like the certain, I don't know, they they don't have the fullness of the the covenant because if they don't recognize the Davidic monarchy, then they rejected Zion. Right, yeah, and Israel. A lot of Israel doesn't even know who Judah are or who the children of Judah are as mm -hmm. Ethiopians. And His Majesty, they don't even they like Zion. They think is over in in old Jerusalem somewhere, or somewhere up in the sky or something. I mean, it is yeah. somewhere up in the sky. It is the heavenly Zion. In another in in another level of study, right? Right, right. In another level of study. And like a spiritual level of study, yeah, definitely. More fit, but this is I'm talking about the real manifestation of the five cycle in the flesh, right? So, you know, that's what this is speaking of. And the standard that's why it's so important that the proper standard be raised because it says this is the word, the word that Yahweh spoke, yeah, it must be raised <laughs> accordingly in its proper order. In my father's house, there is order mm -hmm. and there is a standard and it's upheld. You pick up your cross. Because <laughs> look, it say right here, declare ye among the goyim. 
and the goyim and the senses like it's also the nations the people yeah the people and the nations no, i don't think it's really in a derogative sense but this is just to no. say what, tell people what's going on and, and 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 no doubt the scattered amongst the people mm. for for you know it's kind of possible why would why would um why would it see through the through Israel the Gentiles receive salvation? Because if there be one, see that's the plan. Okay, I give thanks to the Most High for this. It's like that was the plan, you know, scatter Israel mm. amongst the people so that where Israel is, mm. I ain't gonna destroy that place. Because you know, if if there be one, two, you know, righteous, you know, I'll I'll, right. I'll keep it. So through Israel, the Gentiles are are saved. So the Gentiles are are being called because there are some of us amongst the Gentiles mm. to be called out. Mm. And if through I and I, you know, mm. the Gentiles seek salvation, then so be it. If it be the will of Moses. Because the goyim, it looked like. I mean, because you know how you know all this stuff is being uh, exposed or whatever, all this wickedness and stuff, and a lot mm. of the. The, the nations are like they're seeing their idols being broken so they're like you know right here it says you know say Babylon is taken people are starting to figure out certain confusion and certain truths but because at this time Daniel's prophecy already already is fulfilled mm. I would say and 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 you know I could be wrong I'm, I couldn't I don't know well what I'm trying to say right. is 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 that if the idols are already being destroyed then the dream has certainly already been revealed to the king. Mm. So that statue, it's, it, His Majesty, at this time in, in the spirit of time, in the spirit of prophecy, he already judged all nations that there is no other government superior one to another except um, the kingdom of our Lord, the kingdom of heaven, is superior to any other government. Mm. Outside of that, everyone is equal. And so he, he he judged every form of government represented in these idols, mm. right? Right. In these in these false and corrupt establishments or, mm. or systems, right? 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 And so that's the only reason I say that. That's how I can support the the claim that in this period of time in prophecy, His Majesty already it's probably nineteen sixty three or something like that, oh. and he's saying twenty seven years ago. Right. Yeah, he's 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 on confirming his prophecy, mm -hmm. and so he, he judges once again. Now, what are we gonna do? Right. You know, like twenty-seven years ago, I stood before the same world organization that failed mm. to keep covenant, to give meaning to a dead letter. Right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this just for the for the record. Okay. The autobiography of his imperial majesty, Haile Selassie I, Emperor Haile Selassie I, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, My Life and Ethiopia's Progress, Volume 1, 1892 to 1937, translated and annotated by Edward Ullendorf. Let's see, it's chapter... I gotta drink some water. Chapter 35, titled, We Proclaim Immobilization. Uh, page number is okay. There's two page page numbers. One is in the in inside of the book towards the inside of the book. That one reads page 195, and towards the outside corner of the book, page number reads 236. It cannot be doubted that to a soldier, a peasant, or a a traitor. Uh, I guess I have to make the clarification that a traitor, like in a business sense, right? Uh, his country's independence is his greatest pride. Actually, it'd be, it'd be wise to state for the record that this is the covenant of the flag. To uphold the independence, uh, continuing, it is therefore important to convince you, to evince you, Okay, we got to work on that word sound to convince you to the utmost extent possible that quarrels and deceitfulness amongst you should disappear, that love and unity should spread. Even that's a, a testimony to to this next oath in in um upholding 
to the last, even to death if necessary. Mm. Uh, our religion, our Christian religion, because it just the wording to to the utmost extent possible that quarrels and deceitfulness amongst you should disappear, that love and unity should spread. It's like saying that Christianity should spread because mm. our love, our unity is loving one another, but not just any love, but how the Son has loved us, love us, love we, I and I. Oh, man. Yes, I. Yes, I. And so it's, it's almost declaring like the next of... of part of the vow or the oath mm. to defend up to the last our independence and now it's going to go into the covenantal order would be our religion Christian religion in which it, it goes further on to say and that a servant should acknowledge obedience to his master and a soldier to his officer so the servant being obedient to the father and so on and so forth. The spirit of Christ, really. Oh, yeah. And the Nazarite, because... Yeah, yeah, continue? Go, go for it. Oh, just for the record, because... You know, I, and I was watching that video, and... Um, it was... The covenant, which was given through the Constitution, although the Constitution was not revised at that time when His Majesty returned to after the liberation and returned to Addis Ababa and the soldier declared his vow that was, was fulfilled who was a Nazarite in the video I won, I won, yes I the, sure yeah, the, Ethiopia was never really colonized because, like we said, like that I mentioned also, because there was always that flag flying and fighting. So the Nazarite vow, and just to refer to the order of the flag of the Lion of the tribe of Judah conquering, uh, the Honorable Abebe Aragwe, yes, sir. <laughs> oh. um, spoke to His Majesty. Um, he was an officer. Um, of the army, which he had gave the order not to cut the hair. They were they were they were in the afros as we've seen in the footage um, by our brethren Hayel Safari on the channel. Education. Education is a key. Oh, well, three. I mean, education is a key. Three. Education is the key three. There, like, there we go. Because it says three, and then if they don't type that in, it may. Indeed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, you know, the, I'm not sure if I have the entirety correct, but just, you know. And he, he, the vow said, he repeated, I never dreamed, or your majesty, I never hope the sight of your face again, which is kind of awkward in the English, but you know, we could get the, still catch the spirit of it, your majesty, I never hope the sight of your face again. I never dreamed that I once more hope to be happy. I was only determined to fight until I died for our, number one, our independence, and then for our flag, and then for our Christian religion, and for you, my king. For the record. Oh, oh. it was um, Abba Ad Ad. I I think Abba Arag Aragway. Aragway. Oh. Aragway. Right. Okay. Yeah, he had mentioned in the video to his to his um, his chosen, his people, his numbered. Like his army, he expressed that. Oh, for our flag, my fault. I'm not sure if I just one one more time from the top. Yes, sir. You care to? I was only determined to fight until I died for our independence, for our flag, for our Christian religion, and for you, my King of Kings, Kedemali Haile Selassie. Last in parentheses. 
And that's interesting because it's, it's the Nazarite, like I was saying, um, Abeba Arguay, right? Mm. Uh, he, had, he was mentioning to his soldiers like that that the hair, the afro, is a representation of, of their separation and how, not necessarily in those words, but affirming their Nazarite ship, mm. right? Yes. In that, in that they were distinguished by by the by the growth of their head, right. you know, they're covering their glory, really. It tied really much with Samson because it was like um, to distinguishing that 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 fighting spirit. That's what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I the believe, SI. I believe the, that's what what he mentioned. Something that affect Samson and the and the hair. Right. That's what came to mind. Well, no doubt. I mean, but I'm I'm trying to recall something. Oh, the. Well, let's go forward to the the Nazarite. All right, give thanks to most. I kind of caught that uh, idea or thought once once more. The reason we went into the whole Nazarite thing is because uh, cause what he what he hopes and dreams for mm. is kind of expressed in the in the blessing to Nazarite, right? Oh, indeed, Numbers chapter 6, verse, yeah. uh, I think, 24 and 26. So, he's saying, if I recall correctly, he's saying, like, I didn't think I'd even, like, see you again. Yeah, so I, like hope, that. I never hoped to see the I sight. The, I think the sight of your face again. So I never thought I'd be happy for once more, you know, kind of like that. For I'd be happy again. Yeah, Simcha. Like so, so I'm reading. I'm reading. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. Right. So he's speaking this. Once the vow or the mission was fulfilled, mm -hmm. it's like he's he's fulfilling his his vow, uh -huh. expressing it to the fa before before the face of the emperor. Yeah, it would be the like king a, of kings. Look, there's, there's what's called the uh, call and response. And we see this pattern in the Psalms, so this is a, that was the actual fulfillment of the call. This would be the because what happens would be like the cantor, the cantor. I think they call it the cantor or the priest. You know, would chant or call to the congregation, mm -hmm. and then the the congregation would re, would give a response like. Um, in certain psalms, we see that pattern. So this would be the call, right? It, in the real time, this would be the call. The uh, continue reading, brother. Yes, sir. so we over that. Let's see. Let's see how how it gets how it gets tied in. Um, it reminds me kind of like like um the the blessings and curses. Mm. If you keep if if you're kept by him in him through him. Mm for him and he blesses us it's like or oh, I'm gonna just go for it watch it says the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious to thee mm. and so an important thing to note is that the Nazarite vow is already an Israelite that separates himself from Israel mm. and even symbolically like refuses some of the things that represent Israel and and it demonstrating or or just um entering into covenant with himself and that Jai is his, his wine, his his um his happiness. Mm -hmm. That which it, it expresses like the natural joys of a man that one could a attempt to attain. Mm -hmm. But one lets go of all of that and you know it declares himself in in him. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because um he says um Abeba Araguay, Araguay, he says, and I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but anyways, he says that, that he never thought he'd be happy again. Mm. Expressing his, his fullness in, in Nazarite ship, mm. in, in, in that his happiness was the face of the emperor. He completely just, like, said, I never thought I'd see your face again. Right. I never thought I'd once again be happy. It's like his happiness was the sight of the face of the emperor, the king of kings, his mm -hmm. glory. Because his blessing is like, his, his majesty's blessing, because his majesty being in the priest position on, on earth, mm -hmm. you know, it says, Yahweh bless thee and keep thee. It's like the blessing that kept, that kept uh, Ababa Araguay while, while his majesty was, was away, 
fulfilling the word. Mm -hmm. You know, and then Yahweh make his face to shine upon thee. And that's exactly what the spirit of Baba Araguay's sentiments were when he said, the response would be, I, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. your majesty, I never hope to see the sight of your face again, you know. And then the fulfillment again is like, Yahweh lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee shalom, and his majesty gave shalom again to Ethiopia. And it's interesting, the flag. it's interesting how it leads on, it leads on to say, and they shall put my name upon the children of Israel. And Kedemawi Haile Selassie. Yes, I, because, I mean, the children of Israel, his name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. So, Amos, it's not it's not the children of Israel Amos, that's the name that Amos, we receive, right? Amos 9 and 7. Yes, I. Because the fullness thereof is, are you not as the children of the Ethiopians to me, O children of Israel, which means that when we... When we read there, that establishes that Israel and Ethiopia is so related in the covenant that they're almost interchangeable sometimes. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, in the spirit of time and and, and that right. which has been is and will ever be. Yeah, we see that. Right. We see that in so many different ways. Right. I mean, not to go into that, but um. Yeah. Ethiopia and and David says something he says he asked a question he says um I can't recall maybe it's uh, first second first or second Samuel chapter 10 chapter 7 I can't recall to be honest mm -hmm. you know but um says something to the effect of asking a question who is like thy city who is like thy people mm -hmm. he starts asking a question and starts going who is like liking to Israel mm -hmm. and I would add to David I'd be like David Pro David most likely knew Mm. Who, what people were like Israel right, right. why would he even mention that if there wasn't a people like Israel to begin with mm. right and who is he addressing right even that's interesting in itself mm. but then I would say hey you know it's in Amos right. the Most High revealed it clearly in Amos mm. it's ch oh children of Israel are ye not as children of the Ethiopians to me Oh, Israel, something, you know, something to that effect. Mm -hmm. And that in itself is interesting because the context of that that um, chapter or that um, area of chapter in um, the book of the prophet Amos, Amot, it's, it's, it's about the remnant. It's about the regathering. Mm -hmm. It's about the second time around. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's that's the context. And it's completely related to Ch Psalm 72. Right. Before them shall bow the Ethiopians. Mm. And the enemies, his enemies shall lick the dust, and then later on it goes on to say, and and the kings of Saba and Sheba shall bring forth their gifts, possibly gold, mire, or mirror, and mm. and um, frankincense, mm. if not some scripture along with that, you know. But um, you know, the Ethiopians, Saba, Sheba, so it's all it's all related, Ethiopia and 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 Israel, mm. in that sense. And the kingdom and the covenants and everything, right. and so, who's like into what? Who, what people are like to Israel? Well, Ethiopians. Right. And I think another. I'm gonna add another element of of that. Why I think it's so very important, and it's well evident, even if people accept it or not. Mm. It's that the fact that Ethiopia was likened, chosen also, mm. is to be likened to Israel is because they're the closest thing to what Israel should have been. Mm -hmm. And what was probably at a single time. It's like when the when the Ethiopian festi festivals or holy days mm -hmm. are being manifested. Uh, it's like a lot of commentators in, in old footage would say it's like seeing David right. dancing around the ark. Right, right. It's basically saying that this is the the, the the like they said about His Majesty in one of these documentaries. He's practically the incarnation of the history of our time. Right. I mean, just think about what that kind of like is trying to imply. Mm. The reincarnation or the incarnation, the manifestation of the word mm. of our story, of our of the word, you know, right. of our time in the living spirit mm. and the living word or in the spirit of the time within the prophecy. Mm. You know, so even that's very interesting. Right. But nonetheless, I mean, it's very obvious. Oh, forgive me. You killed that in a 
what I was trying to say with that is that if any other well Ethiopia is the only people that upheld the covenant really and I was trying I was going to say something leaning towards the flesh mm. because the independence of our standard and flag also plays a role in, in how you can't confuse the physical appearance of of Israel mm. because see if we if so many, so many things happened. Every other kingdom broke covenant, mm. so they no longer have the security of shalom, mm. of keeping the covenant. That in itself is evident. Mm. Ethiopia expresses thousands of years of independence. Mm. Why would they differ from any other kingdom unless before the Most High they were upholding the covenant? Mm. You know. Right. So they've been they've been independent ever since mm. because they've you know they're Israel in 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 the real deal you know right now what's happening with this time it's a you know to keep things holy you split <laughs> you flip you know you kind of mm. that's the, that's the whole jad divide and then he you know he flips the blessings you know crosses his hand mm. and stuff like that so what was I trying to get to now kind of lost my thought on that but going forward to the f physical appearance Ethiopia's independence you can't say that they look different before you can't say that because a lot of people will try to use these um, uh, not very knowledgeable excuses mm. to say that Israel is not in the flesh of a more what they would say black appearance or mm. whatever ethnically like Ethiopians right. or like Israelites really right but they would say that that's not the case because always oh, talking about the Ethiopia in the Bible. Well, Ethiopia has been independent since the Bible was begin it was being written. Mm. So that argument is completely uh, error in reasoning. Mm. It's, it's a fallacy in logic. It just cannot be because mm. Ethiopia has never transferred authority to anyone else. Right. It's the same Ethiopia three thousand years ago than it is now. Mm. So if there's a comparison with Ethiopia, mm. it's the same comparison that will be to this day because to this day it maintains some sort of independence. Mm -hmm. Particularly in the appearance of the people, they have not been infiltrated to the point where everything's really lightened. Mm. Although Ethiopia is a place where with different shades of, of brown or black and mm. stuff like that. We know that, but what I'm referring to is that hundred years pass and then a lot of people look more more white mm. that's what I'm trying to say mm. like Egypt mm. throughout the years mm. now you wouldn't even assume that well you could I mean mm. if, if you could think for yourself right but a common folk uh, he won't be able to assess the fact that that um, it's possible and a, a darker people would have been in their stead mm. just a hundred years ago right, right. so you that that in mm. itself is a very important connection with with Ethiopia because Ethiopia is independent you can't say they're not the same Ethiopia you can't say that Ethiopians were at one point in time something else no Ethiopians are who they were 3,000 years ago as they are now and if there's a comparison made with them then then we have the real deal you don't have no confusion mm -hmm. as to what that that similarity is right you know mm -hmm. so I think it's important to put out there mm. any comments <laughs> well all this is relative to the flag really what I was uh, what I now was doing is um so we were expressing how even in the autobiography of his Imperial Majesty the Emperor of Ethiopia Haile Selassie I King of Kings of Ethiopia how it was saying it cannot be doubted to a soldier, a peasant, or a trader. His country's independence is his greatest pride. It is therefore important to convince you to the utmost extent possible that quarrels and deceitfulness amongst you should disappear, that mm. love and unity should spread, mm. and that a servant should acknowledge obedience. That's what Jesus Christus taught us. Right. He being a servant to serve each other and, and to be a servant of the Most High. And even Edamai Khan Selassie in glory showed us to serve. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so the spirit of Christ. And then continuing on, it said, um, let's see. Uh, and that a servant should act on a knowledge 
of obedience to his master and a soldier to his officer. If the Italians are proud of their weapon against us, we are proud. We, on our part, are proud that our greatest weapon against them is the help of God. And as Wyndham, Eisen, and I were, were all meditating on, it seems almost very sure in the spirit that this would be a kind of testimony of Christianity. Or was that that the I was saying? Help, salvation, Yeshua's salvation. Oh, yes, yeah, salvation would be understood as salvation. Well, in Hebrew, would be Yeshua, and salvation is Yeshua. That's in, as a he, as the Hebrew, and His Majesty is Hebrew, and a Christian king would definitely understand that in that context, and not really out of any other context that you know it might be misconstrued as. Yes, I give thanks for that. And so, what basically what we're trying to state is the the constitution of the flag and how it's up, upheld or the constitution and the standing in the flag right right it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a recognition and not only of Yeshua as the son but to uphold the true covenant that was given to not only Ethiopia but that flag, it represents the covenant of the, the kingdom of the Son, but upheld by the Father, seeing that the conquering line of the tribe of Judah kept among Haile Selassie, is the Father, of, in, the, in the ensign, in the in the emblem, upholding the cross of Jesus Christus. Yes, sir. Oh. I mean, that's actually pretty interesting, the whole... Hebrew Christian because it, it it's it's another representation of how the flag is being represented within this this um constitution even mm -hmm. in that it's a transfer of power since the beginning from Noah in in the cleansing well from the the beginning being the light mm -hmm. being that representation of the rainbow mm -hmm. and then to the co the sign of the covenant through Noah mm -hmm. the rainbow in faith through faith, mixing it with uh, mixing the word with living faith, perfect union or tawahido, fusing it, acting on it, and you know, receiving the covenant that comes from it. Mm. And then the symbology of the Lion of Judah and stuff like that. So what I'm trying to say is that all this in connection with the one that sat upon the throne, and and um, one that sat upon the throne, and the throne being in relation with the with the ark, that same ark, the rainbow, the light, since the very beginning, mm. right? And so, keeping all that in mind, it's um, it shows the transfer of power within all covenants, mm. and so it's cr upholding Christianity, part of our standard. Mm. Because Christianity received the transfer of, of see the throne. What I'm trying to get to kind of is uh, lay a foundation, somewhat of a foundation to express that the Kepra Nagesh makes known that the throne of of Israel, of Yehuda really, mm. was established in Ethiopia. Mm. The throne, the physical throne on earth. Mm. And Jesus Christos received the divinity. Mm. The Kepra Nagesh goes into that. Oh. And so, I mean, I was trying to tie it into how, let's see, let me read this again. So, to uphold Christianity, basically. Mm. So, it's a it's a Hebrew Christian throne. Right. It would be the throne. I mean, it is, because it's a, he, the king of Israel, you know, and we have evidence for that. So, the connections, I mean, I'm just trying to brainstorming, right? Mm. But the connections of a throne, mm. in that it says, well, if the pair are proud of their weapon against us, then we are pr proud of the greatest weapon against them is the help of God. We actually kind of slipped on that, should have gone forward. It says, our flag, red, yellow, and green, and our seal with the legend, the line has prevailed, are the symbol of our independence, lest this symbol of our freedom should perish 
It is a great honor for our good name and for our history if we die shedding our blood to the very last drop. And that's exactly the constitution laid out by Ababa Arguey, right? Right. That was his. That was his declaration. And to to sum it up, I would say that as Rastafari, we must over <clears throat> overstand that that's our standing in the flag. We must, to the very last, shed our even if necessary our blood to the very last drop and suffer and die if it be Jah will, to uphold, maintain our independence. Could you help me out with the other ones? It was our, our independence, our flag. Our flag, our Christian religion, and for the King of Kings, Kenamali Haile Selassie. And we could spend some bit of time going into details, <laughs> but refer to the speeches of His Majesty speaking about liberty, our liberty, not just whatever idea of liberty ones and ones might have, but our Christian liberty and the willingness to, if necessary, lay down one's life for it.